Hey everybody, this is Sabrina and welcome back to my channel. I am going to be doing another reading journal favorite from January. So this is the Inheritance Games and I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. I also found this image that somebody made over on the left hand side that I'm going to use. I don't think I was able to find who made it. But if I do find it, I will leave the information in the description box. So for this spread, I wanted to try to use my stash of older stamps. I really wanted to kind of match the cover. That's kind of always my goal. So I'm going with mostly green and just a little bit of neutrals with brown and black. But what I found in my stash was a citrus twist floral stamp set that has like little tiny roses on it and a vine stamp. So I'm going to use those to kind of frame in my two pictures that I have. And then I also have a large rose stamp from Crafty Jen Scow who made stamps several years ago. So this is one of my favorite things to do with stamps is just, you know, doing a bunch of cluster stamping around the image or in a section of the layout like I'm doing on the top and the bottom of the spread. And normally when I'm making these spreads, I of course put the book cover down first, right? But I think my thinking was <laughs> that I don't need to put the uh, pictures down yet because I want to be able to get underneath the photos. That's why I kind of waited. I also picked stamp sets that were kind of outside of the box. Like the theme for the stamp set was um, games, like sports games. And I decided to use a bunch of the phrases because it works perfectly. The whole theme of this book is about games and puzzles and um, kind of solving those kind of because this book is going to be three books I believe maybe more but for right now I know it's three books so I stamped game time ready for this it's on and the it's on stamp that I'm going to stamp in just a minute that one was actually like a really big block stamp but I was able to use my scratch piece of paper and go ahead and just get the it's on portion and the ready for this. So those three different pieces I will put in three different spots. So those are kind of my main phrases for my spread and they definitely correspond to the overall theme of this book which is all about games and figuring out what in the world is going on. I just measured my box that I came up with last month for including some stats the rating, what book number it was, and the genres. I wound up making the box a little bit smaller because of where I decided to place it. And I will again use the syncopation design stamp for my rating. And I'm giving this a like four to 4.25 rating. There was one little thing in the book that I didn't really like. I felt like maybe they put that in there just to keep teen teenagers more entertained. I don't know, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. It's a minor thing. It's a really great book and it goes super fast, which is one of the things that I'm gonna talk about when I get to my thoughts. I put book number four out of 100, and the genres are mystery, young adult, thriller, and romance. Now I'm going to go on to the synopsis. So Avery is the main character, and she's just try trying to make it through high school. With the help of her sister Kylie, Avery wants to just finish high school, get a scholarship, and get started with her life. Everything changes in an instant when she's summoned to the reading of Tobias Hawthorne's will. She has just inherited his entire fortune and must move into Hawthorne House. This house, in quotations, is more than a house. It's a mansion with mysterious passageways and hidden secrets. There's also the matter of, you know, his family, which includes four grandsons, Nash, Grayson, Jameson, and Xander. They are all unique, smart, talented, and above all, Hawthorns. They each wonder, especially Grayson, why Avery? Avery will have to take on this mystery of Tobias and the grandson grandsons in order to live. Danger is all around because it's a massive fortune. There's puzzles that lead to more questions and a spark of interest between Avery and one of the boys begins. So there's a lot of going on with all the mysteries and the puzzles and the characters. It's just a really great book. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about in my thoughts is how fast this book started. 
I mean, from the first chapter, I was hooked. And I'm like, I have to keep reading. I have to keep reading. The chapters are also really short, but that didn't real. that wasn't what like essentially kept me engaged. It was the fact that like, whoa, we are starting off with a bang. And this person who's seemingly out of nowhere, Avery, is inheriting this gigantic fortune. Because in this book, in this world, Tobias Hawthorne is pretty much the most wealthy person in the world. So Avery has to be guarded at all times in order to keep her safe. So the thoughts I said, I talked about how this book just took off. I enjoyed how each, how different each of the grandsons were, all strong, slightly dangerous, kind of all slightly dangerous dudes so that was interesting and I loved how atmospheric this book was I felt like I was in Hawthorne house and I could just picture the different rooms and secret spots I also really liked the complexity of the characters I thought it was brilliant they're all a mess but they're all kind of connected somehow and I the book left kind of on a cliffhanger yes on a cliffhanger and I immediately went to my library to request the next two books. Um, so I just wanted to keep reading. And then the only thing I didn't like, um, I'm not going to spoil for you. It's a minor thing, like I said a little bit ago, but only one little thing I didn't like. So quotes, I put, we aren't normal. This place isn't normal. And you're not a player, kid. You're the glass ballerina or the knife. So that is one of the quotes and I loved it. And speaking of puzzles, because this is all about puddle, puzzles and riddles, if yes is no and once is never, then how many sides does a triangle have? That's something that one of the characters says a few times to Avery. Very interesting. This whole book just kept me like flipping pages so fast. So another stamp set that I pulled out that I want to use before I finish up this project is a really old stamp set from Allie Edwards called The Art of Noticing because that has a really big theme in this book is you have these puzzles, right? And it's more than just reading the puzzle and solving it. It's much more layered and complex than just that. So I'm going to... Um, stamp a few words discovering and observing and I'm going to stamp them twice that way I get a little bit of the leftover ink and the messy look and then that phrase the art of no noticing I put that over on the left hand side and then above game time I stamped right in front of me because there's a lot of things that are right in front of you that you can't really solve until you have like all the pieces it's all intertwined and it's just such a fun fun mystery that I loved reading and I've already read the second one. I read it at the beginning of this month, February. So I'm now I'm waiting for the third book to come in from the library because I have to know what's going to happen. It's that good, even though it's young adult. So I'm adding in some stars for one last little stamped piece, brown stars and black stars, and then I will be done. And I absolutely love this page. It turned out wonderful. I love the book. And I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this come together. I would love a thumbs up or a subscribe if you're new to my channel. All right, have a great day. Bye.